Why are there so many bad licensed games from movies and shows that I loved as a kid growing up? Back to the Future was one of my favorite movies of all time. In fact, I even had a Back to the Future themed wedding. But the game was terrible. And it was made by LJN. Then you get a movie like Who Framed Roger Rabbit with the connection between the Disney and the Looney Tunes characters. Seems like such an easy translation into a great game, but unfortunately, LJN made the game and again it was terrible. And probably my biggest love from when I was a childhood was horror movies. I loved horror movies. And again, LJN made two of the most well-known Nintendo horror movie games, Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th. And both of them are really subpar. I, I, I don't understand it. I mean, LJN, how could you make so many bad games? There has to be at least one decent, if not really good, LJN game. Wait a minute. I do remember there was one LJN game that I absolutely loved. What was it? WWF Royal Rumble on the Super Nintendo. Now this, LJN, in my opinion, you hit a home run. <laughs> Now, I'm going to be honest with you, uh, a lot of people are going to say, how can you say that's a great game or a home run? I remember playing it, it wasn't so good. But, I'm going to be honest, maybe I'm a little bit biased. <laughs> even as a kid growing up, I was a huge wrestling fan. So much so that even in my adult years, I actually decided to try it myself. I was also lucky enough to marry probably the most amazing woman in the entire world. And we spent our second honeymoon achieving one of my childhood dreams and that was actually going to Wrestlemania. We had ringside seats for Wrestlemania 27. So with my bias out of the way, let's talk about one of my favorite games growing up made by LJN, WWF Royal Rumble. As a kid growing up, uh, you would have saw this in a previous video, I was a huge fan of WWF WrestleFest in the arcades. And I never understood why there couldn't be a Nintendo game that was basically just like WWF WrestleFest. Uh, wrestling games, they get a lot of grief going back to the Nintendo days. And deservedly so, there wasn't very many good ones. Probably the best uh, NES wrestler that was licensed probably would have been WCW Wrestling. Because the wrestlers actually had finishing moves. Well, a semblance of finishing moves. Not exactly all their own finishing moves. But from the WWF side, the games were okay, but it wasn't really ever a complete game like WWF WrestleFest was. Uh, I mean, there's a pretty simple structure of what you should have there. The wrestlers should look like the wrestlers. They should have their own unique entrance or entrance music. And, more importantly, they should have their own finishing moves. So guys, it's no secret that wrestling games weren't so great back in the early days, at least licensed ones. Uh, the first wrestling game I remember playing growing up as a kid on my Nintendo Entertainment System was WrestleMania, released by Acclaim, which was okay. It uh, basically was your typical punch kick fighter where you pin the guys, and it had some unique little things, like depending on which wrestler you were playing as, like if you were playing as the Hunky Tonk Man, little tiny uh, musical notes used to bounce across the screen. Acclaim made the first one. Where the game started to pick up a little bit, in my opinion, was when LJN took over, which is such a surprise because LJN managed to mess up so many other great franchises. They actually made a decent run at the wrestling titles, but they were never ever perfect. They went on to release WrestleMania Challenge and WrestleMania Steel Cage Challenge, which were both, they were okay at wrestling games, but they were never really great or perfect. They didn't have the proper mechanics and they missed a lot of the things from a lot of the things that I would consider to be essential in a wrestling game. Unfortunately, that was never rectified on the Nintendo Entertainment System, but we went into a new era. The era of the Super Nintendo, and LJN continued making WWF wrestling games. And they made a vast improvement when they released 
WWF Super WrestleMania. Super WrestleMania was a great game. They came up with an excellent mechanic for how the actual wrestling action worked. The lockup technique, moving into the moves, your run, your jump, the ring, everything was perfect. But it was still missing a lot of things. Uh, it wasn't quite perfect. The biggest problem with WWF Super WrestleMania was there was no finishing moves. But also on top of that, around the same time this game came out, there was an amazing arcade game release called WWF WrestleFest, which was pretty much perfect. Outside of not having the wrestlers' entrance themes, this was the closest thing to a perfect wrestling game, and it's probably one of my favorite arcades to play still to this day. So at the time, I decided to write Nintendo a letter, not knowing the difference that Nintendo uh, wasn't publishing these games, it was in fact LJN. And I wrote Nintendo, and I told them about all my issues with WWF Super WrestleMania. And they wrote me a nice letter back telling me that I had to contact the company itself, but they did want to give me an update that LJM was releasing a new game uh, that may have, may actually address most of the issues that I talked about. And that game was, in fact, WWF Royal Rumble, the game I'm here to talk about today. I love WWF Royal Rumble. It was everything that WWF Super WrestleMania was and more. First off, I want to talk about some of the really positive things. It had the same control mechanism WWF Super WrestleMania did, same graphical styles, but it changed its roster of wrestlers, and it was right in the era where Hulk Hogan was leaving uh, WWF, and it was really taking over as the Bret the Hitman Hart era. I just want to talk about some of the wrestlers that are included here. You have Bret the Hitman Hart, Razor Ramon, The Macho Man, Randy Savage, Shawn Michaels, The Undertaker, the Native American Tatanka, Mr. Perfect, Kona Crush, uh, who you may also remember was uh, the third member of Demolition just before he became Kona Crush. Very exciting to have in a WWF game for its time, the Nature Boy Ric Flair, Yokozuna, the Million Dollar Man Ted DiBiase, and last but not least, the Narcissus Lex Luger. This was an amazing 12-man roster for the game. And on top of that, one of the things that really excited me about this was they also included some of the entrance music, which for me was essential in the game. And you had heard some of it before in other wrestling games, but never done this well, where they actually played the music while you were selecting your character, and actually after the character won its match. But on top of that, they did a great job with these entrance themes. Let me just actually bring up some of these 16-bit entrance themes for you, probably my favorite wrestler of all time, Macho Man Randy Savage. Pretty standard theme, you can do that on 16-bit. Let's play one that's a little bit more difficult to do, even though it doesn't have lyrics. Listen to the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels thing. They did an excellent job with music in this game. Although there's no music during the gameplay, the actual entrance themes, they did an amazing job on. Next up was the thing that was most lacking from any wrestling game that we WWF had released before. And that was the wrestler's finishing moves. And the finishing moves were easy to do. They're all pretty simple. It was a combination of the error button on the right trigger. But let's run through how well they did these moves. Uh, I talked about WCW wrestling on the NES a little bit earlier. And you know what? They had finish moves in there, but they didn't always look like the actual finishing move. So what I want to show you now is some of the great jobs they did on the wrestler's finishing moves. Brett the Hitman Hart had the sharpshooter. Razor Ramon had the amazing Razor's Edge. Macho Man Randy Savage, his patented flying elbow drop. The Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels. At the time, he wasn't using the super kick. He was actually using uh, this, I always called it uh, side, it was this really cool side suplex. Uh, would later become the starting grounds for what became the angle slam. The Undertaker's Tombstone Pile Driver. Tatanka used a Samoan drop. Mr. Perfect and the Perfect Plex. Kona's Kona Crush used the Kona Crusher. The Nature Boy Ric Flair and his patented figure four leg lock. Yokozuna with the Bonsai Drop. I love the cool little animation here. The Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase with the Million Dollar Dream. And last but not least, the Narcissist Lex Luger's running forearm. This is actually one of the more complicated moves to do in the game because you had to lock up with your opponent throw him off the ropes with the Y button, then run off the ropes yourself, and then right at the precise moment, hit the air button for his running forearm. So at this point, just the addition of the finishing moves, the wrestler's style, uh, graphical style, and the use of the music, 
visual presentation. This, in my opinion, was the closest thing that we had to a home version of WWF WrestleFest. But what really made it even that much better was the game was called WWF Royal Rumble, and they actually included, to this day, my favorite match in wrestling history, the Royal Rumble itself. So you could do your entire, well, it was a 12-man Royal Rumble, I mean, it wasn't until later games that we had more advanced rosters we do the 30-man, but you had a 12-man Royal Rumble match that was just absolutely super fun to play. And very similar to the Royal Rumble mode that was put in the WrestleFest. On top of that, you also had title tournaments where you could end up winning the championship. You had a tag team tournament, which was very similar to the tag team tournament in WrestleFest. And the one I played all the time was the singles tournament to win the WWF championship. I always wanted to say I was the WWF World Heavyweight Champion. And thanks to winning this tournament, I finally can say I am. The really cool thing about this game as well was the attention to detail. Like When it comes to sports games and things like this, I'm a huge fan of attention to detail. One of the things I like the most about WrestleFest were the small idiosyncrasies that they would throw in there. For example, after you won a match, uh, the, you didn't just raise your arms in the air and then music played. Actually what happened was, the referee would actually raise his arm up to s present you as the winner, and then at the time, uh, Howard Finkel would actually come into the ring and announce you. So just putting those little things in, having the referee in the ring with you, as well as uh, being able to have the ring announcer come in and announce you as a winner was just a huge win in my opinion. And great job WWF for throwing and LJM for throwing this in. Because it made that a game with no music and very repetitive play, those little ideal things made this very enjoyable for me to play. One of the other things I really enjoyed as well was the interaction you could have with the referee. I'm not 100% sure if it was this game or if it was WWF Raw, but you could actually knock out the referee by running into him or throwing your opponent into him. And at that time, you could use one of the other big improvements they put in this game legally at that time, and that was cheat moves. So you could, you know, back rake somebody, you could choke them, and my favorite thing to do in the entire world is you could hit them with a chair, which is awesome. And especially when you get into the championship tournament mode, it is very difficult to actually get through because the levels become progressively more difficult as you go through. So one of my favorite things to do is basically knock out the referee and then shellac your opponent with a chair two or three times, which wears them down enough so you can hit your finisher and get the win. Overall, I've got to say, for a wrestling game in its time, WWF Royal Rumble was my absolute favorite wrestling game that was released. And kudos LJN, you took a franchise from my youth that I loved, unlike some of the other I talked about, and you made it special, and you made it mean something to me and enjoyable to play. So, that's my take on WWF Royal Rumble, my mini-review. Guys, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. This is Michael B. The Game Genie, and I'll talk to you next time. But there was something else I wanted to tell you, too. I like WWF Royal Rumble on the Super Nintendo so much. At the time, I was specifically a Nintendo person. I only had the Nintendo Entertainment System and my Super Nintendo. When I found out that they were going to release WWF Royal Rumble on the Sega Genesis, with it being the exact same game with new characters, that is what finally prompted me to go out and buy a Sega Genesis. And the first game I bought with my six-button controller, which works with the game, was WWF Royal Rumble on the Sega Genesis, and uh, for anybody who's played the Super Nintendo version really liked it, but never tried out the Sega Genesis version, this is a great version of the game too.